Tattoo Nation. Maybe TV, aka me TV, aka here comes the hot stepper. And since we're all considered murderers for playing video games, guess what? That's what we're gonna start off today with. That's right. And I wanna say before I get started, thank you for watching the show. Thank you for sending me information. You people have been saying time and time again, event. We appreciate the fact that you're doing a lot more gameplay videos. It's best that you do gameplay videos due to the fact that the information that you've been getting as of late has been very frustrating on top of people acting like idiots. And you know what? All the way across the board, you're correct. That's why I've been doing them so much. But today, I had to step into this after seeing the information that came down the pipe, and now we're going to address one Fox News again on this. I don't know how many videos I can take on mass media and keep proving them wrong, yet they're still around. I don't get this. No one's calling them on it. So once again, here we go. For those who don't understand what's going on, I'm sure you, I'm sure you see it in the title, Fox News is blaming the Naval Yard shootings from Washington. They're blaming it on video games. Are you serious? Is this where we're going to go? And not only that, they go as far as to say that gamers should be monitored now on what they play. You talk about this guy's background as we look into it. He's got a friend who said, yeah, he had an obsession with video games, shooting video games. In fact, you know, he would come over and he'd be playing so long these video games, these shooting games. We'd have to give him dinner. We'd feed him while he continued to stay on them. A little bit later, uh, Dr. Keith Ablo will talk about is there a relationship between shooting video games and the way you act in real life. Well, well and, are, and are more people susceptible? You know, are, are more people maybe more susceptible than others to playing video games? Is there a link between a certain age group or demo um, in, this, in 20 to 34 year old men, perhaps, that are playing these video games and then their, their violent actions? We, we have yet to find out. Well, just, I mean, unfortunately, you know, it seems like every time something bad like this happens, we look at, is there a connection between video games and the shooter? Well, take a look at some people who were described as addicted to video games. From Columbine High School, uh, Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold, uh, the Virginia Tech shooter, the Arizona shooter, Jared Lee Loeffner, mm. uh, that Norway shooter, who sh uh, Anders uh, Baring, I think he shot 77 people, the Aurora shooter, James Holmes, the Sandy Hook shooter, Adam Lanza, they're all described as essentially being addicted to video games. Uh, Dr. Keith Ablow, last time he was on the program talking about this, he said that uh, th these games, in many cases, need a warning simply so people know that they can be addictive and psychologically damaged. Yeah, a lot of people do it, have absolutely no problem, and I believe there yeah. is warning on a lot of these games. What is it there for what adult content only? What about frequency testing? You know, how often has this game been played? Maybe there's some sort of, I mean, and I'm not one to say get in there and monitor everything, but if this indeed is a strong link, right, to mass killings, then why aren't we looking at frequency of purchases per person and also how often they're playing and how many times, maybe they time out yeah. after, a certain, after a certain hour you go to your on this. Well, it, it's all interesting stuff. It, keep in mind if there was an age cutoff, uh, you know, as was suggested with Adam Lanz and, you know, kids, uh, this guy's 35 years old, 34 right. years old, so it wouldn't necessarily apply. Now, before I get started on this train wreck of a discussion, understand that Fox News hired Elizabeth Hasselbeck, which is NFL quarterback Matt Hasselbeck's wife. She also used to be on The View, and we all saw what she did over there because all she would do is blame video games for mass shootings. That's right. So her super conservative views fit well over there on Fox News with their idiocy and lack of journalism due to the fact that she has no qualifications for this job. She doesn't, but she wants to blame video games for mass shootings and the rest of them want to blame video games for mass shootings as well but they missed one important thing because they never bring it up okay and we're gonna talk about this right now because the washington navy yard shooter was obsessed with video games apparently but he had post-traumatic stress disorder and refused treatment not only that but the naval shooter also was treated at two that's right Two VE hospitals since August. So you're gonna sit here and tell me that we're gonna blame video games when this guy clearly has a problem, and this is something that veterans have been complaining about for a very long time. Because when they come back from wars or things of that nature, they are shell shocked, they have problems, and yet they can't get the right treatment or the treatment that they're given isn't helping. And what did I show you months ago? I did a video about how video games are helping soldiers with post-traumatic stress disorder. Did I not? You know what? Let's look today at a Google search that still brings up that this treatment has been going on since 2007. So Fox News, I have to ask this question to you. Now I hope that everyone else also understands this as well. Are we supposed to believe that with all your funding, all your backing, 
All your statistics, all your credible journalists, with all your research teams, that not one of you could do a quick Google search to see that video games help soldiers with their post-traumatic stress disorder? Are we supposed to believe that? Or is it the fact that you want to keep your agenda going, your witch hunt going, because you know it gives ratings, because you know you can fool people who know nothing about these things that you can just latch on and just get them and control them? Because that's what this is. This is control. When you're asking for gamers to be monitored, that is control. You have to be kidding me. And this is why you're being laughed at. But there's more to that, all right? Because I know I did such, just a quick Google search, and some people I know say, well, that's nothing, that's not a big deal. Okay, well then, how about we look at soldiers actually getting treatment? That's right, in virtual reality. Especially to come in the morning to this. Rush hour, yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, so, just before we uh, turn on the equipment okay. and uh, get it all started, right. we're going to do what we've done before. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to have you start in the Humvee environment. Okay. Put the headset on. All of the bells and whistles that come with virtual reality are simply designed to help the combat veteran revisit the traumatic experience as best as possible. Let's get the weapon. Outside, so. It feels pretty much like a real weapon. It's got almost the same weight to it. The equipment in and of itself really resonates with some of the younger veterans and I think it allows us to get more people in that, that might engage in the treatment. So, uh, where do you think mm -hmm. placing you in the Humvee would well, be most effective? Not in the driver's, in the driver's seat. Okay, uh, so now that's yeah. the front passenger mm -hmm. seat. I want to know what the time of day was, who they were with, what environment they were in. So I can accordingly set up the variables. On a scale of 0 to 10, 10 being the highest level of anxiety or distress, tell me how that distress level is right now. It's I'd say one, one or two. One or two. two. My goal is to keep them at a consistent level of anxiety and distress so that they can then adapt to it. You start entering some of these highly populated towns like this here, um, mm -hmm. your, your, your senses kind of get heightened and, you know, anything that looks like a wire, a hole, but that right there, you know, mm -hmm. that, that street light with that rock, mm -hmm. you know, that's anything. Because you know. it's a sensory experience, you have all these doors which you might be able to open, which might help trigger that reaction. The visual might not, but the sound might. The sound might not, but the scent might. All of them together might. When I look at those visuals, my first thought is, that's pretty good, but I'm certainly not buying that that's a rack or that's a real Humvee. And so it really surprised me when a number of the veterans were, you know, looked at those visuals and you could see, like, you know, gulp. Um, and it's not, and none of them are saying, this is exactly what my Humvee looked like or this is exactly what that road looked like. None of them would say that. But what's happening is that it's triggering a memory. It's triggering a visceral experience. person on the bridge who's firing or firing back at them. Uh, there was one moment, it wasn't so much that the person was on the bridge, where I recall where they were off to the right of the bridge. Mm -hmm. And they were waving at us with an American flag. An ambush fire came around and we, we, we basically continued through it. Anxiety rating. Uh, it's a five. I'm looking for all kinds of cues to when someone is distressed. Tightening of the jaw, how they're gripping that weapon. Under certain circumstances, their whole posture will change. They're leaning forward and they've got that gun and you could see something's happening to them emotionally at that point. Did that 
kind of pushed my stress level recently just with that last one yeah, to up six. To ricochets out? Yeah. Um, that'll kind of bring me back to my experiences on the road. Mm -hmm. Any specific experiences on the road? Describe it to me as best you can. We were jammed on a traffic road, just uh, got ordered to stop, and uh, there, was, there was just hundreds. It looked like almost thousands of vehicles lined up, and there was a blockage with this fruit truck, and basically, you know, the thing that you understood enough after being there for a while was you didn't ever own a convoy, you didn't ever want to stop, you know. If you were stopped for some reason, that was not a good sign. And we were stopped for like 10 minutes. Sitting there? Sitting there and mm -hmm. nothing happening. Okay. I don't know anything more frightful. Because um, it's that anticipation, you know. At least if you had something, you know, showing itself, then you had a target, you know. Mm -hmm. It was that anticipation for those 10 minutes was last. Mm -hmm. they, they lasted like, you know, a year. These are their worst fears. They're in some ways the worst experiences humans can go through. And it wasn't until we cleared that road and started to actually move that we started to hear that, that ambush uh, fire coming from both sides, actually. When you see them face up to it, challenge themselves, work their way through it, it's a thrilling experience. I want you to describe mm -hmm. for me now what your fear was sitting in that convoy not moving. It's just been a tremendously rewarding experience for me to see not only the ways in which I can check off that their symptoms have been reduced, but that it generalizes into other areas of their life and they feel much more capable, uh, much stronger, uh, and that they could face whatever it is the the world will throw at them. Uh, right now, anxiety right. rating. It's good. One. Great. Okay. All right. Thank you. Good work today, Josh. Thank you. Did you see that soldier's face when he was in that virtual reality program? Did you see how he was reacting? I know a lot of people will say, "Look at those graphics; they're so bad." And I will reply to you. That's what happens when you don't have the funding to help soldiers. It's amazing how we can get millions of dollars for Battlefield 3, 4, and Battlefield 10,000, and the same thing with Call of Duty, Ghost Dog Edition, and everything else. Those, they spend millions of dollars on. But this program that actually helps soldiers, which, mind you, the video game industry is pretty much carbon copying, or at least they're trying to, can't get the right help that they need. Now maybe it's not lack of funding, maybe it's mismanaging the money. That's right, and I wanna talk about this because video games, understand that video games and comics are military propaganda targets. We talked about this before and we'll talk about it again, especially because the latest ver version of America's Army is just coming out, all right? But understand, we saw not too long ago, and I did a video on this before, all right? That, you know, Army recruiters were trying to get Call of Duty players to come in and enlist. We saw this time and time again. And they were like, you like Call of Duty, right? You should try this. We also saw EA with Medal of Honor. And I did a video on this as well. You know, at this point, I think I'm just gonna put a whole playlist together <laughs> to, to put all these things in one shot. All right, but also understand, EA, they had licensing, uh, licensing contracts with the gun manufacturers. So if you liked a certain gun in Medal of Honor, you could actually buy that real assault weapon. All right, but it wasn't just EA. No, not too long ago, which I did a video on it once again, all right, that we found out it wasn't just EA. It was also Activision, it was also Valve, it was a number of companies. Why does it need to be this serious? I don't understand, but that's not all. No, no, no. Let's take a closer look at the game research bill. That's right. Now, I'll put the link in the info bar for you to show you that this is going to be a real thing. There's too many people backing this to say that it's not going to happen. But as usual, you should know when bills and you know things like this are passed, the public does have a say so. But I don't think the public understands what's going on, which is why, once again, when Fox News says these type of things and people don't you know don't know about it, they just fly under the radar. This is what happens. But Activision, that's right, is gearing up against violent video games. That's right, the bill for it. Now it's amazing how now they're coming out and doing it, but before they didn't care. You want to know why? 
because it hurts their sales. That's why. They don't give a damn about you. The industry doesn't give a damn about its consumers. I'll talk about that later. But understand, for everything the industry so apparently stands for, when things like this happen, they are never around. And I will put it like this. For everyone says, Tamim, man, we saw, the, was it Tamim, the savior? We saw articles, the savior. Where is he on this issue? Cliffy B, did the media call him the next, the, he's the Tony Stark of video games. Where is he on this issue? You know what? Maybe that's a little unfair. Maybe I should start picking on YouTubers like Anita Sarkeesian, all right? Because so many people defend her to the end and say she's a savior for people. And then I want to know, Anita, where are you on this issue? See, people who actually have the fan base and the power to move don't use it. That's the problem. Not too long ago, we just found out Anita was a liar because, you know, her passion is video games. It's video games. And now we're finding out that she lied about that. Yeah. Don't worry, Anita. I'll get to you in the future. Yeah, because I'm not done yet. But understand, people, that if Activision is gearing up for these things, why haven't developers, the people that you defend blindly, some of, I was, I'll say some of you, not all of you, all right, defend blindly, they can never defend you when Fox News comes out. That's right. And, or any mass media outlet comes out and says that gamers are killers. Why don't they defend you? They're only worried about protecting themselves while you protect them, defend them. It's never the other way around, ever. And this is the problem I have with this love-hate relationship with the industry, with the video game industry, of course, I'm talking, all right? Now, I do want to move on because about military spending. This is something I just talked about not too long ago about maybe mismanaging money. Because about one week of U.S. military spending would wipe out world hunger by the numbers. That's right. World hunger is estimated at 30 billion per year. Last year, the U.S. military in 2012 spent 737 billion in military defense. So why do we have to keep having these wars? I understand that you people know what's going on in Syria right now and what they're going to do, and I'll put it like this, because wars sell. That's why. That's where all the money's going to. If you can't see that, it's crazy. But this is what I mean about the irresponsibility and misdirection of mainstream media. They will make sure that you look like the bad guy, that you are the scapegoat gamers and gaming industry. And it's sad that I have to keep saying that because for every time I defend the industry or gamers, you are also the first ones to come and try to take my damn head off. Yeah. I can't believe he didn't like the game I liked. I can't believe he said something about fighting styles. But when something like this happens, you're never around. Sad. But let's move on because I do want to talk about people who are never around. And I want to talk about the GTA people. That's right. Grand Theft Auto, media out backlash. Now, we've known for years, all right, that when Grand Theft Auto happens, you know, when it's, when it's getting ready to come out, all this backlash comes out. Oh, it's so bad. And we hear all these cases. For example, eight-year-old boy shoots and kills his 90-year-old grandmother after playing Grand Theft Auto. First off, why is an eight-year-old boy playing Grand Theft Auto? Second of all, how did he get to a gun that quick? But yet, the only thing the media wants you to remember is that he played Grand Theft Auto and that he killed his grandmother. Not the fact that he had access to a weapon. He was an easy access to a weapon. See, this is the problem I have. But it gets, it gets worse than that. It's dangerous. All right? We'll talk about this. Rockstar. That's right. Now, I want more proof on this. But as far as I'm concerned, this is true. I am so pissed off at Rockstar. And I understand that so many people love GTA. And GTA 5, it's a fun game. Do I have it? No, I played it at a friend's house, all right? Because I was going to sit and wait. Because after what I saw at GameStop, what they did with their pre-order, hey, if you pre-order GTA 5, you'll get an airplane that no one else has. Why do I need an airplane? Why? You know, exclusive airplane. I don't care. See, this is a problem with the industry today and anybody who says that GTA is a complete game it is not if you are getting DLC on the side it is not a complete game does GTA give you high content a lot of content to satisfy you to say this is a complete game yes they do but it's not a complete game especially when they're bringing out season passes and things of that nature so Rockstar even though I'm not mad at you that much for this you know what season passes are not a complete game because what I'm getting ready to tell you people this is more important all right, this is a tragedy. This is blasphemy at this point within communities and the gaming industry. Understand, Rockstar paid for negative press. 
That's right. Now I'm gonna read this. It says Rockstar, or as they're known then, DMA Design, uh, played the PR game perfectly by enlisting controversial PR guru Max Clifford to help essentially big up the game's more contentious aspects. GTA creator Mike Daly stated he designed all the outcry, which pretty much guaranteed MPs to uh, would get involved. It says we'd do anything, uh, he'd do anything to keep the profile high. That's not all. Clifford's genius campaign involved getting stories planted in relevant news play, uh, papers. It says, I think you know which ones. It says, well aware that they would, they would promptly spark a moral outrage among right-wing politicians and activist groups in particular. It says the results, of course, speak for themselves. Amusingly, though, co-creator David Jones was quoted as saying they weren't out they weren't out of their way to make the game controversial. It says, noting, we always did everything from the perspective of what's going on, uh, what's going to be the most fun. It says, it's just naturally kept pushing us down the darker direction. Rockstar, if this is true, fuck off. Because as far as I'm concerned, for you to sit there and create or buy negative press when you know the press is sitting here saying, video games create killers, and you're going to sit here and say, we're going to create that, we're going to push that press so that we can sell units. Do you understand what's going on here, people? It means that they're selling you up the river to sell a product. It means that they are saying that it's okay for you because some of you have sent me messages saying, I lost my job because people said, you know, they found I play video games. Other people have sent me messages saying, you know, well, people look at me awkward on a train or on a bus because I'm playing a handheld. People treat them differently because they're playing video games because of all the hysteria that the media is going with and rockstar is the cause of it not because of the game but because of the fact that they're pushing it you understand that all you did was help contribute to the stigma that gamers are killers so you're going to mess with people's everyday social lives to sell a game fuck off you gotta be kidding me rockstar you can kiss my ass because for every negative thing that you bought and I don't care if you fanboys get mad at me or not because I got something for your ass later okay but for everything that has happened don't tell me that there's no light at the end of the tunnel because two teen brothers who went to go buy GTA saved an elderly man from a burning home that's right and will that get any type of you know massive you know mass media attention no it won't but I will tell you it will Man gets stabbed and robbed over uh, buying GTA. So as soon as he bought the damn thing, he was stabbed and robbed. Now here's the thing. The media will push that to the moon though. Now, anyone watch my sports videos, you know that we have sat and talked about people getting killed over sneakers as soon as they buy them. 1,200 people a year are killed over Jordans. 1,200 people a year. Media don't talk about that. Nope. But media will end on video games. They will just jump on it and they will just bag on it. And that's interesting. Because you keep saying it's the kids, it's the kids, it's the kids. I told you parents before, you need to watch the parents. Because you should know by now, you should be smart enough by now to know not to buy these games for your kid. But apparently, some of you still aren't getting the message. <laughs> Horrible parody. Disgusting. We have seen videos. Hell, even I did a video once showing you that when I was in GameStop, the mother bought an M rated game for her kid. This is horrible. The kid is crying. Are you serious? And yet, y'all think that's cute. Y'all think that's okay. That is not okay, as far as I'm concerned. But this is what I mean about how you have to have the parents' responsibility. It's interesting because when people, when parents were buying these games for their clearly underage kid, gamers took to Twitter just to prove you wrong and show you, hey, this is what you messed up on. But that's not all, no. Then we have to worry about parents who are just going completely nuts and killing children over interrupting them once again in their video games. And now would you like to know 
why Kenneth uh, killed his son. Why? why? Well, he killed his son because the 18 month old interrupted his father's video game session. What? Mm. Prosecutors alleged during the trial that while Kenneth Adams was uh, playing Call of Duty, I don't know if he was really playing Call of Duty, he was playing video games. Mm -hmm. The toddler headbutted his father and that enraged his father enough to hold a pillow over his son's face oh my gosh. until he suffocated. That Damn. 18 months, 18 months old. The boy was rushed to a hospital where he was pronounced dead and Kenneth L. Adams now faces a mandatory sentence of 50 years in prison. He deserves every single year. Absolutely. I hope that every inmate in that prison decides to play a game with you, Kenneth L. Adams, and I want that game to be called Call of Booty. Mission one, make them bleed. Oh, my goodness. Mission two, make them bleed. Ouch. Mission three, make them bleed. Ugh. Nothing but skin missile animals for the rest of your life. Make your butthole a 24-hour blackout. All right. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. And if we haven't had enough bad news, let's look at people in industry who feel that GTA is sexist and misogynistic towards women. That's right. Here we go again. I want to start off with Arthur Gies or Guys. I don't know what his name is. His name should be Arthur Lies as far as I'm concerned from Polygon. That's right. Because he says this on Twitter. Now, at first, when I saw his tweet, I thought to myself, it's not that big of a deal. You know, even though I disagree with him, you know, he's allowed to have that opinion. But then I saw what Polygon was doing and their absolute hypocrisy when they make exceptions. And let's talk about that right now. Now, Polygon gave Dragon's Crown a 6.5. That's right. And for those who can't read that on screen, I will read it for you. It says, Dragon's Crown makes a strong first impression. It's a fun mix of RPG tropes and dynamic brawler action, but I found its over-exaggerated art style alienating and gross in its depiction of women, even as it shines in a building, a world of fantastic monsters and environments, and the forced grind through the same stages dulled my excitement. Dragon's Crown is a wild place to visit, but it doesn't quite hold up to the light of day. That's what it says. So now this depiction, gross depiction of women shines bright, right? That's their problem with it. Let's go on to the next one. In the next review, Polygon gives Killer is Dead a 4.5. Killer is Dead would almost work as a parody of some of the worst elements of the last 20 years of video games, were it not so dead serious and pathetically incompetent. Grasshopper Manufacturer has made a, a name for bucking and subverting conventions and traditional ideas of good taste, but they are never made in this mean-spirited or deeply mechanically flawed. That's Killer is Dead 4.5. But let's see what they had to say about GTA. Polygon gave GTA 5 a 9.5. Rockstar has expanded and improved upon so much of what's special about video games as mainstream spectacles, from the playful use of characters to the refined take on world design. The developer's progress makes the aspects of the game left in its cultural stasis. The poorly drawn women, the empty cynicism, the unnecessarily excessive cruelty, especially agitating. It's fitting that the game arrives at the cusp of the next generation of consoles. Grand Theft Auto V is the closure of this generation and the benchmark for the next. Here is a game called occasionally for the worst, but overwhelmingly for the better between the present and the future. So that gets a 9.5 and this is where I have my problem with it. Now understand people that I don't have a problem with scores because people are going to have their opinions and I think .5s are stupid anyway. But how do you say that killing strippers and hookers are not as sexist as character designs or mature themes? I don't get this. All right, Polygon, you made yourself look bad with this and you're a joke. But I do want to talk about more what's going on with reviews and how gamers and you GTA fanboys have been acting. Let's start with this right now. Console gamers petition for GTA not to be made for PC because they say that PC gamers don't deserve it because of all the hacking and all the pirating. So you're going to take games away from other gamers? Are you serious? This is stupid. But yet, this is the immaturity that we have to deal with. That's not all. In more petitions, the GTA uh, for PC actually hits 400,000. That's right. But it dries up for the Wii U. So even though PC gamers want GTA 5, we don't know if they'll get it yet, but at least they're at 400,000 as opposed to people making, you know, petitions to not have it on there. That is absolutely immature. 
Don't tell me it's okay as a gamer to take games away from others. We just saw this not too long ago with the fighting game community when they tried to take away another game because they wanted it on the Vita instead of the 3DS. Stop this. That is absolutely buffoonery. But that's not all. That's right. Gamers petition for a woman, a reviewer, to be fired for her GTA review, even though she gave the game a 9 out of 10. Are you serious? Are you serious? Look, let's get something straight here, all right? You can make petitions to get people fired for reviews, but you can't make petitions to stop mass media from calling you killers. You can't make petitions for companies to stop milking you dry and paying more and more money for a complete game. You can't make petitions for developers to actually act professional. Are you gonna tell me that all these things that's going on in the industry, let alone outside the mass media, you won't make petitions on, but if she gives this a nine out of 10, you want her fired? Seriously, this is ridiculous. And yet, these are the gamers that people pay attention to. Understand, I've said it once, I'll say it before, others have said it as well, the industry has made a monster. It's created a monster of fanboys. As I said on the podcast not too long ago, Gaming Anarchist, what did I say? I said that the industry is not worried about making intelligent gamers or you know educating gamers. No, they just want legions of fanboys and sheep so that you just keep buying their stuff. They don't respect you as an individual or a person with ideas. They, res they just want units sold. That's what they look at you as. Sales numbers, units sold, pre-orders. It's sad. And you're eating it up. This is what they want. The lies, the deception, the marketing, the advertisements. And you know what? I'm sure one of you are going to come in here and say, well... This is how it is. No, it's not how it is. It doesn't have to be this way. And some of you are going to say, well, Rockstar's been doing that forever. So that makes it okay. Do you understand what you're saying? But yet, giving you this truth, I'll be the bad guy for it. Not the people slandering you. And the fact that I'm standing up for you and telling you how things are. Because if you haven't noticed in this video, I've pointed fingers at mass media. I've pointed fingers at the damn industry for not helping out the gamers. And I'm pointing the finger at gamers for acting like this. It all needs to be cleaned up. But yet, you don't want that, right? Because nothing can ever be improved, right? Fox News, let me ask you a question. For you people to say that you support the troops, now we all should support the troops. Why didn't you bring this up about the post-traumatic stress disorder? Did you not people, you don't want people to know that? Or any mass media? It's easy to target an entertainment medium. We have seen it since the comic book ages and the movies, and the music games, and now video games. It's a trend that needs to die. If you don't understand it, don't talk about it. Because you come off like an idiot. But other people who also don't understand that will believe in you. And that's the problem. Parents need to educate other parents. Gamers need to step up and educate parents who don't know things. And you kids who want certain things, think about this before you buy that and rated game. And I say kids because you have to have your parent or your guardian buy it. You should at least let them know what it's about. Not just say, oh, it's a cool game, it's a trendy game. Let them know what's going on in the interest of fairness and not just because of what you want. And this is why I had to come out today and do this video. I'll talk to y'all later, y'all be safe. I'm out.